Hey everyone, it's Vamp Calf back again with another RC project. I have a quadcopter with a burned out motor, and it's just a little toy grade. It's nothing special. Uh, it's just something I enjoy flying around the house and outside on less windy days and when I don't want to get out the bigger rig. And I looked up prices for spare parts and the motor turns out to be $7 just for the motor when the entire RC I can get for 12 to 15 uh, And I'll put a link in the description for the quadcopter that I'm going to be taking apart. Well anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn that broken RC quad quadcopter into a functioning RC boat. And I'm going to do that with printing off some 3D parts and yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and print off all the parts and get everything ready and I'm gonna go ahead and make an RC boat. Okay so we got the boat all printed up. It's just a single layer. I'll put the uh, link also to the Thingiverse file that I pulled this from and I went ahead and cut a, a, an opening for the battery compartment and 3D printed off a little battery tray. It just fits right in there. Batteries can be exposed to water so we don't have to worry about that. Then I went ahead and unscrewed all this ahead of time so I don't bore you guys to death. But So all it's going to be is two of the motors will be null. You don't need them at all. So these two I decided. All you need to make sure is that one rotates one way, one rotates the other way. So clockwise and counterclockwise motor. Or else you're not going to be able to actually steer the boat. And what the idea is, is that a quadcopter, essentially, if you guys know how the quads work, is when you're lifted up in the air and you go to head and go to turn left or right, whichever way you go, more force is exerted on the motors that are trying to push towards where you're steering and then the throttle is cut on the opposing ones. So when you turn one way, you get less motor power on one side, more less motor power on the other side, and then the opposite. So we're essentially gonna take it and flip it like this. So when you add more throttle, it'll push left or it'll push right. And I haven't figured out which way the motor or the uh, props need to spin in order to get where left is actually left and right is actually right. So we'll get into that later, but all it's gonna be is just swapping out the props on the motors. And the motor will be, or the ESC is going to be waterproofed, and it's just going to be positioned right here. And then going to use the arms, cut them off so they're extended below the boat, so that way uh, the props will actually be sitting underwater because this sits rather shallow in the water. So I couldn't put the props on the back here. Uh, so that's that's the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, waterproof the ESC with some shoe goo and drill in a couple little mini holes and start cutting apart the body to get the uh, propeller um, propeller arms to hold the, uh, or the brackets for the motor I should say. So let's go ahead and start waterproofing the ESC. Alright and then I don't have any Plasti Dip so I'll just be using Shoe Goo. Uh, it works just as good. Uh, it's just a lot Pretty much once you coat your electronics, you can't pull it off, which is the one nice thing about Plasti Dip is you're able to actually remove it once you apply it, but this stuff, once it's there, it's it's there for good. So, But like I said, this is all just for fun to see if we can actually make this into a boat. It doesn't really matter if it uh, works or not. It, this quad to me was junk, so if it... If it doesn't work, no loss. But if you want to keep your electronics in in working condition, I would suggest using uh, Plasti Dip, uh, the aerosol can uh, over the paint on stuff because you can apply even coats. Uh, you won't create dips and valleys where moisture can pool up. Uh, that's the thing I noticed when using the uh, paint on. Plasti dip was when I would go to apply it, I would get small craters would appear when it was drying, and I actually had moisture get in there a couple times and burn out my ESCs because I didn't have them completely sealed. So then I switched to the aerosol version of uh, the Plasti dip, and that stuff is 
that stuff's incredible. So I would suggest if you were to do any uh, waterproofing to use the aerosol Plasti Dip versus the paint on stuff because, well, like I said, you know, the paint on stuff, you can end up getting leaks. You can't see it as good either. I don't know. I don't know. Just, I mean, take my word for it or not, whatever. <laughs> but I would use the aerosol Plasti Dip. Um, yeah, I've used, like I said, I used both the paint on and the air or, and the uh, spray on and I would just suggest don't waste your time with the uh, paint on stuff. And just go with go with the aerosol. It's way easier to apply. You can get even coats, like I said. Pretty much, I'm just trying to talk to uh, take up the time. So I'm just gonna babble. And you can use your finger, or whatever. I'm just using a paintbrush because it was close. Once you get everything covered, mostly all of the leads, wherever any kind of contact is going to be made. You also want to cover up the contacts for the motor because the water could arc across there and potentially fry something. So we're trying to cover up the terminals to where they're soldered into the board. And I think we're good. Hopefully my head's not in the way. No retake on this one. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this dry and then come back and do the underside. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and install the battery tray. Same thing we're gonna be, that we used for waterproofing, we're gonna use for uh, for, the ad for it, um, adhering or using it as the adhesive to stick everything onto the boat too. Shugu is pretty much an amazing all-around thing that you can use for RC. Well, really, it's good for <laughs> waterproofing and for uh, sticking stuff down good. Because once it's stuck, this stuff pretty much stays. It doesn't move unless you really wrench on it. So, I mean, I learned about Shugu. I was using Plasti Dip alone for just by itself for years. And then heard about this wonderful shoe goo stuff, and I pretty much not turned back. But for the for the ESC, it would have been nice to have some of the Plasti Dip. But the shoe goo will work great. There it is, right in there. We'll let that dry, and then while we let that dry, I'll go ahead and cut cut up the body for where we're going to be reusing these as the motor mounts. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and hack this up. Let me get some scissors. Hopefully the scissors work. Oh yeah. <laughs> cheap, cheap injection plastic from China, I gotta love it. Make sure I got the right one. And this will probably be way more than I need, but it's better to cut long first than to cut it way too short and then be like, ah, damn it wasn't long enough, and then have to figure it out and extend it again. So like I said, it's always best to cut off more or cut off less than you think you'll need. That way you can modify as you go along and it's always like, I guess, well, I guess the not dumb way of saying it, it's easy, it's, it's easier to remove material than to add it back on. So that's why we're leaving more on now. All right. I'll feed these motors through. Glob. 
and the glob of shoe goo at the bottom. Nice large dollop. Push that down. So look at that. So this is all waterproof, so it's not going to matter if the water hits it. Fingers crossed. Okay, so now we just put the housings back on the motors. I had to cut some off because the wires aren't long enough and I don't really feel like splicing wires. Not today anyhow. Now, if we run into a problem and the props aren't submerged enough, then yes, then I'll extend the wires. But for right now, I'm gonna see if I can get away with it. Got one on. Get the other one on. Of the parts of the videos like this just must be so exciting. I don't even know why all 10 of you watch this. <laughs> well, sometimes it's more than 10. And then all we gotta do is just glue the mounts in place. Just like that. Awesome. More shoe goo. I should probably just use hot glue. I've been talking such high praises about the shoe goo, why not just use it for everything? A little bit more. Then depending on how good the trim is, we shouldn't have to do too much to make the boat go straight. I'll just let that dry and we'll try firing it up. Okay, so I went ahead and let everything dry and 3D printed off some props and uh, see if it works. So now it still has the gyro in it, so you have to lay it down flat like it's going to be on the water. Yeah. <laughs> and since quadcopters can both go up and down, right? up and down with the one throttle and then forward and backward so I had the the rear ones I think they're the rear no these are the front so 
now not only because you know it has to give more thrust to make the quad go forward or backwards, now I have up and down all the way, and I can go... even faster. <laughs> Hell yeah. Alright, I'm gonna fill up the tub and give it a maiden voyage. So I went ahead and added some little scale features to the boat and added a couple little caps to cover up the electronics and battery tray. And then this just pops out to remove the battery. Pops right back in. So let's see what it does in the water. Oh, well, the props aren't in the water enough, so I think I'll have to do a second. I have to get the motor somehow further in the water. Yeah, it just hydro turns after, or uh, what's they called? It just locks out after a while. But it works. All oh, right. So now I got the motors moved further into the water so the props aren't sticking halfway out. Well, it worked when you know it. So if you have a 3D printer and a broken quad, don't throw it out. The electronics aren't useless. Just print out a little boat and some props, chuck her in the water and go for a spin. Now that was a really fun project. If you guys enjoyed it at all, feel free to subscribe and click that little bell to get the notifications whenever I put out new videos. And I will see you guys next time.